Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. Day two of Dell Technologies World. Loads of people here, 14,000 in attendance, 6,500 partners, analysts, press, you name it, it's here talking about all things transformation. We're very excited to welcome back to theCUBE, Sam Garcott, Senior Vice President of Infrastructure Solutions Group Marketing. Welcome back. I'm psyched to be here, thanks for having me again. Lots of news, lots of buzz, mm -hmm. break it down. We're powering up the modern data center. I think that was a big theme of this morning's keynote. Uh, we're very much focused on taking the, what we refer to as the pillars of the modern data center to the next level and being able to introduce a handful of new products this week. Very, very excited about them. I think we're getting the feedback and response we expected. Yeah, Sam, I heard Jeff actually said, power is that brand that I want to hear. We got you know, the, yeah. the, the Power Max and the Power Edge and you know. You might want to get up. used to it a little bit. Yeah. You might be able to connect a couple trends here. Uh, we're, we're powering up the modern data center, but we're not done yet. Obviously today was, and uh, this week is a big push there with the introduction of Power Max, the new Power Edge servers, uh, as well as the VxRail, VxRack SDDC enhancements. But this is a journey we're on as we power up the portfolio and we're just getting started. All right, Sam, maybe bring us, give us the update on the portfolio. You basically have marketing for all the Dell EMC That's pieces, right. which is the, the, the data center piece there. Mm -hmm. uh, EMC, you know, Joe Tucci always used to say, you know, overlap's good, I never want to, you know, let a wedge in there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the critique would always be, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't figure out, you know, that, that portfolio, it, right. it's kind of sprawling. Mm -hmm. So, how do you balance the, the breadth and meeting what the, what the customers need, and how should we be looking at, uh, both from a product and a market standpoint? Yeah, so, you're right, our history is no, no creases, no gaps, uh, choice for everyone, options for everyone. Uh, the alternative, one, one product for everything. We've always chosen not to go that path. However, there is a balance here, I think, that we all strive for, and that's something that I'm working very closely with the rest of the ISG team and Jeff's team to really understand, as we move forward and power up this portfolio, how do we walk that fine balance of choice and flexibility for customers and partners, as well as simplification and simplicity for end users that want to make sure they're deploying the best a breed solution for their needs and not, not confuse them at any time. So it's a fine line. I think we're making good progress there. We're going to continue to do that as we move forward. When you're talking with customers, the, the, the users, what is it that they're looking to power up? What, how, how is it actually applied within yeah. an organization? The big shift going on is this world of traditional enterprise applications that are certainly considered mission critical, tier one. Those aren't going anywhere. Those are continuing to, to require the highest levels of resiliency and data services and everything you would expect from an enterprise grade array. What is new is the next generation applications that have historically been run in a sandbox, off the beaten path, a line of business, an architect, built their own thing, and then guess what? It became important, in fact, now mission critical. This is where you find things like AI, ML, deep learning, IoT. When it becomes mainstream and important, guess whose problem it becomes? It moves to IT because that's where they run their end-to-end uh, -end data services, their resiliency plans, their uh, data, uh, uh, data replication plans, business continuity. The expectations of those use cases now are at the enterprise level, so the bar is being raised there because they don't want sprawl of use cases and applications, especially for their mission critical use cases. So that's what we're focused on as those apps become mission critical, providing them solutions that give them the enterprise grade capability but the performance and capabilities they expect for that other segment of the market. Sam, when I look at the portfolio, I wonder if you can speak to really who you're targeting with the messaging. You know, mm -hmm. think back 10 years ago, it's like, yeah. well, EMC was a storage company, Dell, you know, primarily, is, you know, server and PCs right. and the like. Now we're talking digital transformation, yeah. uh, you know, powering the future. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jeff and Michael and Allison went through all of these trends. Transformation. How, yeah. how do you position uh, where, where, where the products fit, who you're hitting, who are some of the key constituents that, that you will add to with? with it's gotten more complex, there's yeah. no doubt about it, especially as the next generation workloads emerge in various spots of the organization, as well as the more as you talk about digital transformation, you're really moving up the stack, so to speak, in terms of the type of people you're selling to. So we've got the world's greatest sales for force in the industry, but we've had to modernize them as well as we've gone through this product modernization. How do we modernize a sales force that, of course, can have the 
the storage admin conversation, the, the backup admin conversation, that's what we've been having for 20 years, <laughs> but that's no longer good enough. You've got to be able to pivot and go up into the uh, CXO level in terms of the leadership of the IT departments, the line of business leaders, which a lot of times are architects or specialists within a given field. And frankly, even some cases in my world, the CMO you're selling into because it's a business data analytics engine or something that's providing new insights, new markets and new businesses. So it, it has gotten more complex there and the skills required to sell at the byte level all the way up to the, the boardroom level is paramountly of paramount importance as we go forward. So we spend a lot of time on that now. We were talking with a gentleman from TGen earlier today, Stu and I were, and it's, it's such an exciting topic, biomedical research, sequencing yep. the human genome and how much faster they can do it now and how much more data they're generating. But they have such potential there, you mentioned CMOs for mm -hmm. example, to be able to use that data, combine it, recombine it to, people always say, oh, actionable insights. It's one thing to be able to, to get actionable insights, it's another thing to be able to have an infrastructure Mm -hmm. and, and agility to be able to capitalize on them and, and deliver differentiated products right. to market, um, revolutionize the customer experience. Mm -hmm. From a digital transformation perspective, are you finding any industries in particular, we mentioned biomedical research, where they're kind of really leading the charge here and helping you mm -hmm. guys develop the product strategy or is yeah, it more horizontal? I, I think genomics and, and, and medical and the health industry are great examples of traditional large businesses that also play very aggressively in early adopters. I, I was kind of born and raised in a small company called Isilon that is now part of the Dell EMC portfolio. And what we were able to do with a breakthrough bleeding edge technology 10 years ago was we went right after a vertical go to market strategy. So genomics research, media and entertainment, um, uh, manufacturing, these are areas that are large businesses, but they make big bets on emerging technology because it's the only place you can go to get those next generation capabilities as those applications mature over time. Uh, the great thing about within uh, Dell EMC and the ISG portfolio is we have solutions that can now meet both of those world's needs, more so as they start to mature and, and become mission critical. I think we're even more well positioned to help them lead through that transformation uh, that, we, that we're seeing going on in all those different verticals today. Uh, Sam, one of the things we heard in the keynotes is, are, are some of the emerging trends. Give us a little book, book forward, uh, your ISG group, what, what kind of things are hot on your plate, uh, especially if, if you look at kind of the enterprise customers, what's kind of near term and give us a little bit of a roadmap. Of yeah, what seeing. a couple things, uh, I would certainly say cloud and, and moving to a cloud first, cloud enabled world. Uh, that is really driving a lot of our roadmap innovation as we go forward. So it includes everything from mobility of, inf of information from an on-prem hybrid to exclusively cloud native off-prem. We're innovating in all of those vectors. You really just can't pick one anymore. So that's a key area. As well as cloud-based analytics and telemetry information, leveraging the cloud to understand how your infrastructure is operating over time. I would say that's definitely a, a major area of investment. The other major area is we have a vision of autonomous infrastructure within the storage world, autonomous storage. Really eliminating the need for the day-to-day -day management of storage because the system is so smart, it really takes care of all those typical tasks that, com that consume a storage administrator, a system administrator's day-to-day. Uh, -day. We're in the business of creating outcomes and helping our customers create outcomes. The more we can get them out of the managing and migrating and protecting data and into the application layer where they're adding a lot more value to the organization, I think that's a win-win for both organizations. So machine learning, AI is the technology that's going to allow us to enable an autonomous infrastructure, really make the infrastructure invisible so you can focus on your applications and your outcomes. What are some of the things that you're hearing from channel partners in terms of, they're on the front lines, yeah. often dealing with customers that are at at some stage of a digital, of a transformation journey, we'll say. Yep. What's some of the feedback that you're hearing from the channel? We know that there's a number of announcements. Yes. We spoke with um, Cheryl Cook this good, morning. Good. How are they being enabled to deliver these solutions to help yeah. drive autonomy, for example? We've got, in parallel to Dell Tech World, we've got the Global Partner Summit. We've got just an enormous amount of the channel community here for this event. Uh, we did make some key announcements, including the Dell MC Ready Bundle. I think it's a great, um, ready stack I should say, it's a great example of re which reflects the feedback that they've given us is 
give us all the pieces to be successful, to stand up a IT transformation in, our, in, in their customer's environment, train them, enable them, package it for them, to make it easy and seamless for them to go in and be that trusted partner for those organizations. So that's one example of the direct feedback from the channel partners. They asked for that offer. We responded very, very quickly. And now we've provided them that kind of end-to-end -end kind of uh, reference architecture to build your own Dell EMC end-to-end -end CI infrastructure. So very excited about that. And that's direct feedback from the partner community. All right, so that's the partner. How, how about the customer feedback you've gotten so far? Went through a lot of announcements. I, I, I can't even imagine how many customer yeah. sessions are going on here. Oh yeah. What, 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 what's the consensus? Yeah, the, so far? The, the excitement is around NVMe. And look, we're not first market. I, I'm totally okay with that. I'm fine admitting it in here in the cube. Uh, but we are the first to get to market the right way. And that's really what I measure ourselves on. We didn't just build our own custom NVMe modules, we didn't uh, build something that would be difficult to add on to in terms of NVMe over fabrics or storage class media. We built something architected via software-defined architecture with an end-to-end -end NVMe implementation. Our customers love that because it gives you the right-of-way benefits of performance, but it also is future-proof in that they'll be able to easily add in storage class memory, NVMe over fabrics when it becomes available into that system. So it's not a forklift upgrade, it's built for today as well as tomorrow. They love that aspect. So if, if customers, is there pent up demand for this NVMe solution? Can you give us any guidance as to, you know, is this going to be 10%, you know, what, what kind of, how fast will adoption be of something like yeah, that? Yeah, so the reality is it's still fairly early days there as well. We, we expect this to be a, an offering that's going to start small and grow over time. That's why in the, in the high end space where PowerMax is complementing our VMAX line, the VMAX 950 and 250 are not going anywhere anytime soon. For organizations that need to bring those next generation applications together and need that real-time response, PowerMax is the way to go. We expect 60 to 70% of all organizations by 2020 to have at least one uh, real-time application running in a mission-critical environment. That's one, 60 to 70%. So I would say it's still early days. You're going to have a specific need for that level of performance to go to NVMe, but it's going to start accelerating here over this year, particularly with NVMe over fabrics coming to, to market later as well as storage class memory. That's going to accelerate it even more. All right, Sam, just want to give you the final word. Takeaways yeah. you want people to have understanding Dell and the, the Dell EMC portfolio when they leave Dell EMC, Dell Technologies World 2018 this year. Yeah, certainly I hope they see the investments we're making to power up the portfolio. I think the announcements we made this week have been fantastic in terms of responding to market needs, customer needs, um, and frankly, I want them to learn more. I want them to watch more and more of theCUBE, to learn deeply how things are uh, rolling out, what was the, the mind behind the madness of building these products. I know we've got a large amount of the team speaking in the cube, but whether it's in the cube or through the sessions, learn, adjust, because everybody's modernizing, everybody needs to transform. This is a great opportunity for them to do that with their skill set and their knowledge in the industry. Everybody does need to transform. Sam, thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE again, sharing what's new and what you're doing, leading um, marketing for all of Dell, e Th Dell EMC. Thank you, thank you. And you've been watching theCUBE. We want to thank you for watching. I'm Lisa Martin for Stu Miniman. We are live day two of Dell Technologies World in Vegas. Stick around, we'll be right back after a short break.